everybody, uh, it's Sid from Parch and Stereo Cleaning and today I have uh, nothing to do, well to be honest I've had about a week off nearly now. Um, so what I'm going to do is answer a few of your questions that you guys have been leaving in the comments recently. I did ask what, you, what did you guys want to see on the channel. Um, so a lot of them, a lot of you guys said, oh we want to know your equipment, blah blah blah, various different questions just about work, life in general, things like that. So that's what I'm going to do today, so I'm just taking you around to the garage now. Um, I cleaned all my equipment yesterday, just sort of bored, so basically a bit of servicing for the equipment. So, um, there's always something in there. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that gets on. I'll show you how that's all looking. Um, and I'll sort of run through actually the tools I use for each job and things like that, but mainly just answer a few questions and get on with stuff like that. Um, don't know how long this battery is going to last. I haven't charged any of my stuff, so we'll see. I might have to run back to the house and get another battery, but yeah, I'll catch up with you when I get there. Nice one. Oh, almost forgot to say as well, thank you everybody for 65,000 subscribers as well. Um, that's one hell of an achievement, isn't it? Let's be real. Um, so yeah, the views are down quite a bit on YouTube at the moment. Um, I don't know what's happening, I've spoken to a few people and they said all the same, like people's videos just aren't performing very well, um, which is fine, I don't expect this one to, but hopefully it sorts itself out because I've got some really cool videos coming up soon, which are, I hope it's all the sub boxes. So, uh, I'm here now, so I will uh, take you through to the garage now. Uh, before I take you in there actually, let me show you, I have cleared out my van. Um, remember when I first started, I just got this van and I said, oh, I'm going to get loads of stuff done and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I haven't made a single change yet. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I know a lot of people have been waiting for the van sort of video, but I'm going to get it done soon, I do promise you. That thing's still bolted in. I'm debating keeping that or not. Um, but yeah, so I've tidied that up a bit. I mean, I need to strip this floor off. It's getting damp in here and everything. So, um, but yeah, um, pretty much empty van ready for all my equipment to go back in. I need to sort that shelf out as well. It's still being held up barely into the wall and uh, with a piece of wood propping up there, guys. I'm a, I'm a mess guys, I'm an absolute mess. So much stuff to do. I'm uh, really, really letting the van down, I really am. But uh, yeah, right, let me show you, you guys are gonna like this, one second. All right, that is <laughs> everything I own crammed into a small space. Um, I put a post on my Instagram yesterday saying, uh, I think it's time for a storage unit because this isn't my garage, this is my partner's dad's garage. Um, so I know there's, there's probably a lot of, uh, of you uh, guys out there that have got you know, a son-in-law or um, even just thinking about sharing your garage with someone and give you a heart attack. Yeah, so bless him, he's let me use it while I can. Um, but I mean, look, I've got too much stuff, guys. I need to get it out of there. Um, and there, most of these boxes are also mine as well, just from equipment that keeps coming. So oh, I'm gonna have to get all this out and show you guys everything, and I. Uh, right, I'll do that now. So later on in this video, I'll be answering your questions from a lot of the comments, some of the interesting ones I've found. Um, but for the first segment in this video, I'm going to run through what I use for pressure washing, what I use for gutter cleaning and clearing, what I use for soft washing, what I use for roof cleaning, etc, etc. Um, so I'm going to have to start taking some of this out in stages and putting it back in, but yeah. All right, I'll start with pressure washing, so. All right then, so sorry if it's a bit noisy, there's uh, literally houses being built right there. So this is the machine I use, this is a Slipstream Pro 20, 15 litres per minute pressure washing petrol machine. Um, I got this from Spinnerclean. Uh, dot com. They did me a bundle deal for this um, and a nice deal on it for featuring it in my videos, which was awesome. Um, so the point of this is there's a big hose coming off here. Now that is a filter on the end of that. And this is a draw feeding hose. So you'll pop that into the tank. The pressure washer will, will then suck the water through this filter up into the machine um, and then into your gun, which you attach to the machine. Um, I really do highly recommend this. Um, I've given it a nice clean up yesterday, so it's looking nice because it was getting filthy. Um, but yeah, simple as that really. Um, so yeah, you can see great build quality. It's been pretty much flawless so far. Um, I've barely really had an issue with it and I think then it's probably been user error to be honest or there wasn't really any decent water supply at the property I've been at. Um, yeah, does the job, amazing bit of kit. Now then, onto the round spinny thing, also known as a flat surface cleaner. Um, this thing really sort of comes into its own on slabs and really flat surfaces, obviously like that. Um, Indian sandstone, things like that, this thing is amazing for. Cleans up really nice, I mean I'll show you the bottom of it. Okay, sorry about that guys, battery died. Um, so yeah, flat surface cleaner, um, if anyone doesn't know how they work, there's this little thing underneath that spins around, so when the pressure and the water's going through, the force of that spins this thing at like 1000 miles an hour, 
um, and that's what cleans so yeah you don't have to go quite slow because if you it's spinning like that and if you go too quick you'll miss certain parts and you'll get like rings that will appear um, so yeah flat surface cleaner love the thing it's just not that great on block paving unless you've pre-treated the weeds um, here's the lance that I use I do need to get a bigger one to be honest um, that's probably next on my list so that's just a basic standard lance they're pretty cheap and then this thing on the end everyone always asks about this um, this is called a quad jet um, also known as like a J-Rod, I think. And let me uh, try and take this off and show you. So that's a quick release fit in there. And get you in frame. A bit stiff, so I've left it in there. You shouldn't really leave it in there. Um, but yeah, so that's that. So it's got four different um, size jets on the front. So you've got like a zero degree one, which is a straight line. I think that's a 15, 25, and then a 60 or a 40, I think. I can't remember. Oh, it says it on actually 45. No, there's that. It's starting to corrode a bit. I can't see anyway, but yeah, close enough. Um, so that's a pretty handy little tool and then in my bin there I've got a turbo nozzle in there somewhere as well um, And then yeah, so I just keep my hose and a few extra lances and stuff in there And I think my turbo nozzles floating around down the bottom um, a lot of people say what's the use of the bin? What do you use that bin for and um, this acts as a, a buffer tank essentially so I fill this up with water Use that hose pop that in there um, and then draw from this because say for example with an outside tap like we've got over there um, some outside taps will produce 15 litres per minute but most of them won't and you know sure enough you'll go to a job and the tap's probably only around 11 litres per minute 12 litres per minute if you're lucky so that won't be enough uh, flow of water that the pump needs to work efficiently so you start to get like a pulsating sort of thing and you lose pressure constantly and stuff like that so if you fill up a tank of water it acts as like a reserve tank so the machine can take as much water as it needs um, and then the whole time you're still filling it up so the bin will go down and maybe like an hour into the job you might need to just stop for five minutes let the bin fill up a bit um, and then away you go again um, but that's about it for the pressure washing setup um, this is something i've just recently started using uh, this is called a mud suck out i got this from rutland pumps um, this is basically for any standing water pools puddles bit of mud um, it says you've got really bad drainage on a job you can just stick this in it um, and it basically just turn this little thing up here which whatever way it is all oh, right turn that and then it just sucks all it creates like a little vortex at the bottom so it forces water out but sucks it up at the same time it's weird um, but what works pretty good so that's my pressure washing setup i think i want to move on to gutter clearing now so i'll uh, stay tuned oh and i also almost forgot to talk about cost um now this machine this bundle so you get that machine one flat surface cleaner and one lance i believe new you're looking at sort of roughly 2200 2300 pounds um, so not super expensive really for something, I mean you're going to make that back within, I don't know, depends how much you charge your jobs, but um, not too many jobs really. Um, so yeah, well worth the investment, but let me just say, I started out with a Karcher, you can laugh all you want, it's um, a bit of a meme in the, uh, especially in the UK industry really. Um, so yeah, that's, I did my first couple of jobs with a Karcher, because um, I just started pressure washing off a whim, so I was cleaning a customer's roof, because I never really thought about doing it to be honest, and then the customer says, oh, would you be able to clean the driveway for me? And I was like, yep, <laughs> I've like, never done it before. So that night I quoted it, got it. Um, that night I went out and bought um, a Karcher, cheapest one, hundred pounds from b and I think it was. Um, next day I went back and did the job. While I was doing that job, two people approached me and said, can you do ours? So then from the money from those three jobs that I did, um, I bought that Wilkes 750i, which a lot of my most popular videos on this channel were all done with that machine and that machine was 400 pounds lasted me a year of solid work and then i went from there and then uh youtube channel started popping off the company got in touch and sorted me out with that machine so it just grew from there so you don't need to spend that amount of money obviously now i've used it it's like it's so good compared to what i was using before and you get the work done so much quicker but if you are starting out on a budget don't think you need two thousand pounds to start up because you can do it definitely for cheaper because i'm proof of that now then enough of me waffling let's get on to gutter clearing and uh, yeah, speaking of money, um, this machine will set you back quite a bit. Uh, this is the Skyvac Industrial 85. I featured it on a video of me cleaning some gutters at school recently. Um, I don't own this. This is actually on loan at the moment for about six weeks. It's probably up. They just haven't asked for it back yet. So I'm uh, just <laughs> getting every uh, every last day out of it, to be honest. Uh, awesome, awesome bit of kit. Um, and it is absolutely huge. Now, this is my gutter vac that I do own um, from Gutter Sucker systems whatever it is i can't remember it's a sister company to spinner clean anyway um they sorted me out with this machine uh it's got to be about six months ago now maybe five months ago uh really good bit of kit perfect for just your standard 
you know, smaller properties. I mean, this is four bedrooms, not small, but any sort of, you know, regular domestic job. Um, that machine is going to kill it. It's going to be absolutely fine. Um, but you will on larger jobs or really bad and dirty jobs, you're going to find yourself at a bit of a loss sometimes with suction. Um, if there's really heavy clumps, really heavy moss, it's going to, you're going to be spending it. Sometimes it might just be easier to get up there with a ladder. Um, I'm not slating that machine at all because it's got its place. Uh, but going from using that to then using this thing, it's there's absolutely no contest and it's shown by that in the price i mean the price for that i think it's less than 500 quid i mean i'll put the actual prices on screen because i can't remember but this with all the poles as well you're looking again like two and a half grand at least i think um but is it worth it yes if a gutter cleaning is a big part of your business absolutely invest in something like this if you're only doing it sort of every now and again um or you need or if you do it by hand which obviously costs nothing um, if you're climbing up ladders, clearing them out by hand, I would recommend getting a smaller gutter vacuum just for those jobs that you can't actually, as a wasp, just for those jobs that you can't actually reach by hand. So over conservatories or maybe it's a three story property, things like that. I don't see the point in spending two and a half grand on a big vacuum that you might, you know, yeah, you'd start using it more because you pay for it, but did you really need it in the first place? That's something that crosses my mind a lot um, when I'm thinking about investing in sort of big equipment, especially if you don't really have loads of money to spend. So if you've got a clearing day in, day out, or you know, you've got to say you've got a big window cleaning round and you're always doing it and you want to start getting into more commercial work, some factories might get in touch and say, you know, we need ours done, a school might get in touch that might be three stories high like my one I did. Uh, it's worth investing in the machine. But if you, uh, yeah, again, if you're just doing it every now and again, I'd really recommend something like this or the Skyback Atom, which is like a sister to that basically. Now then, coming on to the poles, these are the ones for the Skyback Industrial. I've even managed to sneak the hose in here. I'm not going to get them all out because it's just going to take me ages, but they're all carbon fibre. I think they're called the Elite Poles. Really good stuff, but again, I'll pop the video up where I featured this machine properly instead of spending ages talking about it. And the poles in there um, are for the uh, Gutter Sucker Junior. Um, again, the poles will set you back a bit because they're carbon fibre, but I would much prefer having carbon fibre poles than uh, the aluminium ones just because of weight. These are so lightweight, they feel like nothing in your hands, you can use them all day. Um, which then brings us on to the little camera setups. Now, if you, this is a thing, this is the Skyvac cam. Um, really nifty bit of kit, basically you put it on the end of a pole or you put it on the carbon fibre poles and you can basically inspect the gutter in before you do the job or you could have it on there while you're doing the job so you can see that you've basically got everything because um, it comes with a screen as well that you can sort of attach to the pole that you're using um, really cool bits of kit I really do actually like them and it's a fantastic idea now this is the upgraded version I'm not sure if I showed this in that video but um, I think this is brand new out um, so you've got this little camera here which is uh, cool. It's even got a light on it. I don't know if it's charged up, to be honest. It's got a bit of mud on it still. There is, the, basically, the, I think I need to turn it, connect everything up to turn it on. I'm not going to do all that, but yeah. It's even got a light on it, this one. So if you're cleaning in the dark or there's a nice shady part that you can't see, it's got a little spotlight on it, which is really cool. Um, and then this heavy duty, and this stuff's like military grade, honestly. Big heavy duty camera screen there as well. And also, this actually records video as well, which was the, the only problem with this Skycam. If you want to do a video to show the customer that you've got everything on the job, you can't video with that. But with this one, you can. It's got like a USB uh, SD card port to it, so you can actually record videos on it. It's got a little selfie stick for you there as well, which is pretty neat. Um, I don't know the prices of this, but I know it's very expensive. Um, I'll try and put the price on screen now if I can find it. And then finally, basically just to match that, there's this really long pole here. With a connection on the very top that you can attach that camera straight to so it just pops on there and that can be it's basically an inspection pole pretty much um, but you could convert it to a few other things but it is quite heavy um, so I'd, it's probably better off sticking with a waterford pole i don't know um, but i haven't actually used it that much honestly um, because i use a gopro so because i'm filming videos anyway off my gopro if i really need to see something i'll just stick my gopro to it but for the guys that aren't making videos and stuff like that the inspection cameras are probably a good shout and i know i think it was lee from all school cleans just says he a friend of his removes wasps nests or something and he uses the inspection cam to basically get close up to find exactly where the wasp nest is without having to get on a roof for example um so yeah prices of all them let me think this this another battery is about to die now um so if i can remember that with the poles you're probably looking about two and a half grand i think 
the baby one with the poles i think you can get that well under a grand including the camera i'm pretty sure probably about 800 quid anyway i'll put it on screen that thing's super expensive this pole probably very expensive as well so gutter clearing can actually be more pricier to um to get going than pressure washing but the main thing about gutter clearing is if you don't have the money you've got these so you can just use your bare hands and get up there if it's safe to do so obviously all right then so up next soft washing what the hell soft washing what does that even mean well essentially soft washing is cleaning something without use of any high pressure and it typically involves using chemicals to clean that surface um, at no more than like a tap pressure really um, you know or very very gentle gentle pressure um, hence the word soft and washing cleaning however you want to say it um, so yeah typically a lot of chemical use um, and a lot of expensive equipment as well, but you don't need to start off expensive. You can work your way up. You've just got to be like shit hot, pardon my French, with making sure that your chemicals are mixed correctly um, and you're doing it safely, which is the main thing. So before you even consider, even think about soft washing, PPE, uh, masks, always, especially if you're using sort of toxic chemicals like biocides or bleach, you want to be using respirators. Um, these are the ones I use for biocide. ABEC one filters, if you can see on there. Uh, 3M masks. You can get them, I mean, for the filters and the mask, you're looking at about 40 quid, 50 quid, I think, at the most. So, why wouldn't you? Yeah, you might as well. Safety goggles and gloves as well, but they're in the van somewhere. Um, next, you're going to want a delivery system. So, um, you're going to need something that's going to contain your chemicals and essentially pump it to you. Um, that could be like a dosatron, like this is, which uses just water pressure that basically fires it through um, into the hose and then up the hose into a water fed pole and then you can scrub it onto the roof or spray it or onto the wall or whatever you're using it on. Um, so yeah, just standard hose reel with some 6mm hose that will go inside, 5mm hose that will go inside my water fed pole and some 6mm hose that will go from this thing here. I think I've got about 50 metres on there so that's enough for most jobs for me really. Um, right, secondly, so this guy right here, I've showed this a few times. This is a Dosatron from GK Pro. Um, it comes with a little box there to store the chemical in. This is the Dosatron unit which basically dose, it injects the correct amount of chemicals into the water. So you plug this one into the tap, this one into the tap, water comes in, it pulls chemicals out from this, tam, out from this tank and then fires the chemicals out this way that's perfectly mixed straight into your hose reel, up one of the poles and out the end. So awesome bit of kit. Something like this is going to set you back around seven to eight hundred pounds for this setup here, but I highly, highly recommend it. But also note, uh, I'm getting a haircut today, by the way, because stay at me. Um, but also note, this is only for biocide, so you don't want to be putting any other chemical through this. Really, I think there's some you might be able to put through, but definitely not bleach. Um, it's just for biocide, for roof cleaning, render cleaning, and driveway cleaning, or whatever else you need it for, sanitisation, things like that. Um, but yeah, one of my favourite bits of kit that I own. Now, secondly, or thirdly at this point, if you can't afford the 800 odd quid for something like that, you can use um, just a standard water-fed pole backpack that's designed for pure water, so there's no chemical resistant seals in this. But if you wash it out after every go, um, it will be fine if you are running chemicals through. It's not gonna last forever, but if you get six months out of it, I mean, they cost 120 pound, I think. So all you would do is you'd measure out your chemical in a jug, put the chemical in, fill it up with water, actually fill it up with water first, then put your chemical in, otherwise it will foam everywhere. And you wanna be giving it a really, really good stir. And then same thing, that thing goes into one of them, up the pole and out onto the roof or render, whatever you're cleaning. Um, they are good, this is how I started. Um, it is annoying because you have to, you know, it will run out within 10 minutes, so you need to keep refilling it, refilling it. And obviously it's electric as well, so you need to make sure it is charged up, but the batteries do last like days on these things. Good bit of kit, again, 120 quid, I think, at the most for one of these. Um, you just need to batch mix, um, charge it and keep refilling it, which is the downside. I mean, if you filled that up nearly to the top with biocide, that would probably last you about two jobs. Whereas you'll have to fill one of these up probably about four to five times per job. So yeah, there's something to think about there. But that's your starter setup budget. That's your more sort of high end setup really. Now, if you don't have either of those, um, this is not something I'd probably use for biocide but it's something I would definitely use for bleach. I haven't actually used it yet, but this was sent to me by a window cleaning warehouse. Um, I'm just looking for a good excuse to use it really. This is the facelift, uh, what the hell is it called again? Facelift chemical pump box or something? Um, I'll have it up on screen with the price. So essentially what we've got in here is a, a pump, a battery, whatever this thing is. I do need to have a proper look at it. 
um, but it's all got Viton chemical resistant seals. So if you're running sodium hypochlorite, bleach, anything like that through this, it's not gonna damage it at all. Um, the seals are resistant to it, meaning they're not gonna corrode, like ble bleach pretty much corrodes everything, but uh, it'll have a harder time doing it to this. Um, again, downside with this, you need to charge this up, so you'd have to take this battery out, charge the battery. I don't know how long it lasts because I haven't used it yet, um, but this is an option. I think this is around £600, um, but I'm not totally sure. Um, it's got a flow controller on the front, which is nice and neat and handy, so you can basically control how much uh, chemical is coming out. Um, inlet, outlet, so yeah. Oh, it also comes with one of these as well, which is nice and handy, so you've got there like that, which is all nice, nice and easy to do, so that just pops straight back on there. Um, and I think that, where yeah. would that go? That will go into there, I think. So that plugs in there like that, and then you plug yourself into that one, and away you go. So I think that will be drawing from there, going around, coming out this way. Again, can't recommend it yet because I haven't used it, but it does look the part. Um, I'm just waiting for an excuse, just get like a render clean or something going, and then I will uh, do a video on this box for them. Um, so yeah, looks pretty cool. Again, it's sort of middle range price compared to a Dosatron. I wouldn't use it for roof work, but it's definitely something to consider for like render cleaning. Um, anything really I'd be using hypochlorite for, which isn't much for me usually, but you know, businesses grow and stuff, so you never know what I'll be doing this time next year. So then next up, we've got the chemicals that I use. So this is what I use for all my roof cleaning work, GK Pro Biocide. Brilliant stuff, absolutely love it. Um, I order it all the time and I go through it like butter. It's really, really good stuff. Highly recommend this Biocide. There's something I've been sent which I haven't used yet, which is BioClear. Same thing basically as this one, um, but this one's from Pure Seal, so I'm yet to try it because um, I've still got loads of this stuff to work through. But I'll give it a shot, I'll see how it goes um, and see if I like it or not. Um, this one's AlgaClear. I used to use this, I don't really use this one anymore um, just because I like this one so much. But yeah, same thing, Biocides, they do the same job. They kill off the biofilm on the roof, destroy the moss, destroy anything left over, soak into the tiles and clean them over time. Um, really good stuff, it's the main chemical I use in my job. Um, but these are all sort of the main ones, I think there's a few more companies that do it, but yeah, these three are kind of the, the main dogs really. Oh, uh, who's that other company? I'll pop it on screen, I can't remember their name. Ben's, Ben's do a good biocide I've heard apparently as well. Um, and then this is the hypochlorite that I use, this again is from Pure Seal. same guys that have just come out with this one. Um, pretty good stuff, it's fairly cheap, it's just the delivery just ramps up the price of these so it's better to buy in bulk. I never do because I don't use it that much. Um, but yeah, this is hypochlorite, so very strong bleach. This is what I use if I need to on my pressure washing, patios, driveways, etc. If there's any black spots or really stubborn marks. Whack a bit of this on it because it's an instant clean, whereas a biocide is a slower clean. But obviously if someone's having the driveway cleaned, they usually want it to look good by the time you've left instead of having to wait months like it does with the roof cleaning. Sorry, getting very loud over that. Right then folks, so new batteries in. I forgot where I was. Um, now onto the poles that you can be using for soft washing. This is going to be tailored specifically really towards roof cleaning um, because that's, God, it's so bloody loud here. Um, because that's the main thing that I use soft washing for. So cheap end of the scale for roof cleaning. Now this would be for putting your roof scrapers on the end, which I'll show you in a minute, um, and for putting like a brush on the end as well, um, and connecting the chemicals up through it and doing it that way. So this is a Renegade, you can get this from Window Cleaning Warehouse. This is a 30 foot Renegade, um, which would cover you for pretty much most of the roofs you'll come across, like something like this, if you can see any of these sorts of roofs. If you're up on a scaffolding tower there, 30 foot is going to be more than enough to reach the very top of that roof. Um, so it's the standard run of the mall pole. I think this was about 160 quid. Uh, super, super cheap really. Um, it's bulletproof as well, they last forever. The only thing you might need to do is change the clamps there every now and again. Um, but I've only had to change one clamp once in like a year and a half of using one of these poles. So 160 quid, you genuinely cannot get better than this. The downside to it though is it's really heavy. Like really, really heavy. Um, so if you're using it all day, it will knack your shoulders and arms out. But as you come down the roof, say you might have to use all the extensions at the start of the job to get like the, say, I don't know, down to about there on the roof, say start at the top, go about four tiles down, you might need all the extensions. You wouldn't for a 30 foot, but say if you did, um, then all I would usually do is I'll take out one extension. So you can literally just take out the bottom one, um, completely remove it and then the pole is a lot lighter. And then as you work your way down the roof, you can just keep taking out more and more extensions until, you know, and at that point it feels like nothing then anyway. Um, right, on to the next one. Um, I picked this up from, I think it was a fellow named Aaron. 
pretty sure it was Aaron. So thank you, Aaron, because he did this for me really cheap. He was, I think, he had two of them. So he um, he just asked me if I wanted to buy it. So I said, yeah, sure. Um, it's a full carbon fiber pole, um, loads, loads lighter than a Renegade. However, a little bit more expensive. I think this is about 250, 260 new. Um, so a little bit sort of higher on the price range, but still pretty cheap, really. I think this is 25 feet. Yeah, it is. Um, so yeah, you could work all day with something like this, to be honest with you, and you won't really feel it. However, because they're a bit more expensive, it's like, oh, you might be, especially on roof work, you're going to be scratching up a bit. So it's preferable to use like a second-hand pole or like an older pole um, if you've got a new one anyway. Because um, you buy a brand new one, you don't want to be scratching up on a roof every day because it won't last very long. Um, but yeah, so good bit of kit. So I'll just use this for soft washing mainly on some lower down. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm using this for window cleaning because um, I'm setting up a new window cleaning round. Um, but yeah, there's an option anyway. So middle of the range sort of pole for soft washing, roof cleaning work. Now, top end of the range, this is a 40 foot over eight pole. This is my go-to pole for any hard job and for all my soft washing jobs. So if I get up to, again, a normal roof like this, I'll be using the Renegade for the job. So I'll have my scraper, roof scraper on the end of that. And then I'll have my brush and everything all connected up, ready to go on this one. Um, again, it is full carbon fiber, so it's lighter than the Renegade, but still pretty heavy um, as it is 40 feet long. But this thing's perfect. And the only time I break this out for actually cleaning a roof is when I've got like a really mad, huge property to clean um, like you know something that would be like another half a roof onto that maybe like a really really high roof um, you know that's when I'd get that bad boy out because it'll make my life a hell of a lot easier doing it that way so there's the poles nice and easy um, price wise 160 about 250 and I think this one was 700 so yeah you, you get what you pay for put it that way with the poles um, onto the roof scrapers so I think this is the last one I'll do now and then I'll get answering some questions because I've, I've pretty much gone through everything. Um, these are the Freeman's Flexi Scraper Roof Scrapers. Um, this is a double headed one so you could put another blade um, on there with that one so you can flip it around if you need to. Um, I've got two of them, I'm probably going to buy a third one soon just because I tend to be working with people every now and again these days. Uh, these are just wicked man, one of the best things I've ever bought. Um, this is the first one that I bought, probably it's got to be coming up to two years ago now maybe. Uh, maybe a year and a half ago, um, yeah, and it still works fantastic. I haven't had to get anything replaced on it. Um, I think this connection here may have snapped once, but it's only plastic. You can get metal ones. Um, I've only had to replace it once. Um, they get bashed up and scratched up, but they're, I don't know, they just seem to last ages. So highly recommend one of these scraper heads on its own. So just the top part here and, and this part here. Um, it's probably going to set you back, I think it's about 120, 130 quid. Um, but if you want to buy the full set, I think you're looking closer to 200, maybe 250 quid. Um, and you get all of these blades. So if you imagine, these are for pretty much every roof tile that you'll come across in the UK. They've got everything. So yeah, you just want one of them on, scrape the moss off the roof. And then you pop the chemical on the roof like I was on about earlier. But yeah, you've got everything here, literally everything. So shout out to Steve. Um, for making these, he actually sent me out a full set for free because I've used them in the video so much as well. So, cheers, Steve from Freeman's Flexi Scraper. I really appreciate that. Um, and I'll just start working my way through them. I mean, these blades, these last ages, you'll get like multiple, multiple jobs out of one of these, and each blade is only about 15 quid. Um, so, they do genuinely last forever. Um, it's always handy to keep like an angle grinder with you on certain jobs because some of these pan tiles. There's a lot of one-offs in the country, so we can't, you know, be mass-producing blades like this for a type of tile that you'll rarely ever come across, because you just won't make any money on it. So it's always handy to bring like a bit of an angle grinder, and then you can basically cut one of these to fit the tile if it's slightly out. But if you use it enough on the roof, um, it will wear down to the exact specification anyway. So yeah, there's roof scrapers. So for a full roof scra scraping setup, 250 for the scraper and, the, and all the blades you'd need. Um, and then literally 160 odd quid for a decent pole um, so you can start roof you can genuinely start roof cleaning and like roof soft washing with that backpack as well that's how i started i pretty much got everything i needed for four or five hundred quid max um, for a job that the first one you do if you're pricing them sort of averagely you're going to be looking at 750 quid, seven, seven, 750 quid for a roof job. Again, that's not including the chemicals, so the chemical will be about 100 quid per job on chemicals. If you don't own the tower, there's another 100 quid per job or per week on the towers. Um, so the first job you do, you'll almost make all your money back from the initial investment. And by the second job you do, it's all profit. So 
but then if you look into sort of I don't have the most efficient roof cleaning setup it's, it's pretty good um, I would say I'm like nearly there you know towards being on the high end and you know the sort of best of the best equipment um, but there's still a few things I'll, I kind of need to buy, but I just haven't needed to. Sorry, it's a bit darker now. Um, so my setup that I use for the roof cleaning, so we're looking about 1,500 quid for the Dosatron um, and the pole combined. Roof, eh, again, probably about another two and a half grand, um, roughly, for an efficient, really, really good, solid roof cleaning setup that's going to just sort you out for probably years and years before you'd need to really replace anything um, so yeah it seems like there's a running theme there doesn't it if you want to be sort of efficient and have a good setup at everything exterior cleaning I mean again it's not the best of the best because you can get systems out there that are like 10 grand just for a steam cleaning setup and all the stuff that goes with it um, but for like an efficient solid setup for gutter clearing um, that's gonna do you any job you won't be cut short on a job probably two and a half grand pressure washing that you can pretty much do any job probably two and a half grand and roof cleaning that you can do any job even the big mansions that you come across you're looking at two and a half grand so if i was going to say if someone if you've i don't know if you've just quit your job and you want to start up an exterior cleaning business and you want to start on the top end um, and have everything ready to go bam 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 you could probably get absolutely i mean you can get bundles for a lot of it so you can make it cheaper but just say in your mind about seven seven and a half thousand pound and you're pretty much you, you're like you're good to go for everything. You won't have you won't want for anything. Put it that way. There'll be nothing that will be there that you'd be like, oh, I wish I had that for this job and stuff. Because I never think like that. I've got pretty much everything um, that I need to do. Sort of any job that I come across really. Um, now you could start absolutely doing everything for on the cheap, under a grand. To be honest with you, you could get a four hundred pound pressure washer. Um, 100 pound backpack for the soft washing, 100 pound pole, 100, uh, 160 pound pole, I mean, what are we up to there, five, six, looking at like 650, and then you think of all your little knickknacks that you sort of need as well. I mean, you can clean the gutters out by hand off ladders as well. Um, so well under a grand, you could pretty much be on your way. And then each job you do then, just upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. Um, by, you know, say you do a 700 pound roof clean, it's like, right, I want to invest the 550 pound profit I've made on that job onto um, a better soft washing setup, a better pole for the roof cleaning. You know, I need a few more brush heads for this, 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 and that. So don't be sort of put off by some of the prices. You can do it a lot cheaper. It's just the downside of doing it cheaper. It's going to be more work. It's going to be harder. Um, and results may vary if you've uh, mucked up and not batch, mitch, back, batch mixed a chemical properly or. Um, it's going to be harder, you know, say if you're using like a cheap pressure washer, you're probably going to need chemicals on a lot of your jobs because it's not powerful enough to lift some of that dirt off that you kind of need it to. So, right, let's get into some actual questions. I can literally say it's been 10 minutes I've been talking so far. I really do try guys to cut it down. Um, so that's 10 minutes just on this clip as well. So, yeah, God damn it, it's going to be a long video, folks. But yeah, I'm going to get into the questions now. I'll just run through a few things that people have asked me on recent videos and stuff. Um, and that'll be about it. And then I'm going to the expo, the cleaning expo in the UK. Tomorrow, I'm actually going. Um, staying Friday night, staying Saturday night, be back home Sunday, have that day off, and then I should be um, back to work. I'm going to, oh, what time is it actually? Two o'clock, right? In an hour, I've got to go to a school just up the road because they want their playground pressure washed. Um, so that'll be one of my free charity cleans. I've got another free clean coming up at the very start of October. Um, which will be a good one. I'm um, going to do sort of a fundraiser for that. Uh, and then, yeah, I've got like some crazy, crazy jobs coming up that month. It's probably going to be my busiest month of the year, to be honest. So, all hands on deck for that one. Right, I'll see you in the van. Right, folks, well, to all the workers out there that um, have sat through that, I um, hope that's helped you out because I get this, I get the question every day of uh, what do you use for this and what do you use for that. So, I hope that's helped you out a bit um, and answered a few of your questions. And for anyone starting out, um, don't let the prices put you off as I said um, I see it all the time, I see people getting blasted on social media all the time um, you know because they're working out of a car I was talking about this with a mate yesterday it's like they're working out of a car and you know they don't have the best setup in the world and you know all of that sort of thing and people are taking the mick out of them and stuff like that it's like we all start somewhere, I mean I've never had much money ever in my life and I've tried to start businesses constantly over and over and just failed and failed and failed and I could, could just never seem to get ahead and I always used to look at the people you would speak to a guy on the street and he'd open his phone and I'd go whoa look all the stuff you've got man 
and um, even halfway, you know, up until me making these YouTube videos, that was still the case. I didn't have much money. I was doing everything on the cheap. Um, it is just the way it is. Um, but money makes money, so everything you can, if you just keep reinvesting it back into your business, even if you started on a below one thousand pound budget, you know, as you're making that money, pay your bills, and then just reinvest everything back and just slowly upgrade everything. I mean, I've had help because I'm making these videos. A lot of companies have reached out, done me some really good deals, so I've managed to get to this point a little bit quicker but even for me getting a van um, you know I got no help with that that was the the biggest thing is as soon as I was like cause I'd be, I was working out of a car for ages years so as soon as I got the van it was like right it gave me a bit more of a surge of motivation so um, but yeah right anyway enough for me really waffling on let me find some questions and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll answer them so this is a good one I've answered this a few times but it's been on like a live stream or ages ago so a lot of you guys might not know um, Crazy Haller says, how, uh, maybe a video about how you got into pressure washing and why you started YouTube, basically my journey till now. So I'll, I'll briefly run through it all. Um, I started out as a window cleaner, um, started out my own business um, in Birmingham in England. Um, didn't do very well at all, um, was quite lazy, um, didn't drive or anything. So it was, I was walking around miles every day with my ladders, just basically trying to find work really and earn some money. Um, ended up moving to Gloucestershire, moved in with my dad, he quit his job and we started a window cleaning business there. That did really well, um, but then I've, after I think it was about two and a half years, um, the baby was on the way and things like that, so I moved from there, sold my half of the business, um, moved um, in with my partner, um, started another business then doing the same thing, and then we were only in that place then for about six months if that, then we had to move again. And that's where I am now. So we moved to Burton and then I started my business here. Um, started out with the window cleaning again and then I was just sick of it. I was just in an absolute slog of just restarting over and over. Um, and I thought I need to make, because I don't know how long I'm going to be here. I was like, I need to make money quick. Um, it's, it's too slow, especially if you don't know if you're going to settle somewhere to build a regular round of work. You need to look for like, well, I needed to look for just big ticket work. So I thought, right, it's a risk, but if I could try and have a business just doing one-off work, so cleaning a roof or cleaning some gutter in, blah, 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 it's, you know, the stuff that I do, pressure washing, um, that would be ideal because sometimes one of those jobs, they're harder to get, but if you get those jobs, um, you know, one roof a week would be the equivalent of a really busy window cleaning round, you know, with the price that it is. So all I'd have to do is one job a week. It might take me two days, um, but that's it. So I need four jobs a month, basically, to have a decent wage. So that's just what I started doing. Um, and then I got quicker at it, reputation built. Um, and then the reason I started the YouTube channel was basically because work was getting a bit slow towards the winter. It was pretty much a year, actually almost to the day since I started this channel. Um, work was getting slowing quite down towards winter as it normally does. And I was starting to stress and I was like, I need to find a way to advertise that's not costing me anything because I was just spending hundreds and hundreds on advertising my business and it just wasn't working out. Um, so I thought, I'll try and make, I love making YouTube videos, so I thought I'll try and make YouTube videos about my work and see if that can promote my business. Didn't do anything for like about three months, um, I don't even think I got one job from it. Um, but I noticed to see it starting to build and I think by that point I had a couple of hundred subscribers um, and people started messaging me for advice and I was thinking I'm always the guy that has to message other people for advice so I said, you know, don't take my word for it but this is what I do. Uh, and then it just went from there and then I started pressure washing and then one of my first videos that blew up actually the first video that did quite well I think it got like 50,000 views was a video of me talking about um, how people treat other people in the industry and it's like, like oh you're telling Sid you're telling it you're giving all the secrets away I think it was called giving away trade secrets the video um, and that did quite well and that sort of boosted me up to I think about a thousand subscribers um, and then just by pure luck, one of my pressure washing videos, um, which I never expected to do well. I mean, I always expected my channel to, you know, by that point, if I, I mean, 50,000 view, 50, views on a video was an anomaly. Um, my, most of my videos would be lucky to get a thousand after a month. Um, but then one pressure washing job I did at a care home, started off slow, same as all the other ones. Um, I think after like a couple of weeks, it had like a thousand views maybe, um, which I was happy with, to be honest with you at the time. And then out of nowhere, it just just took off. It went to the moon. And that's over a million views on that video now. Shortly after that, it was only, I think, two videos after that one. Um, that one also zoomed off to the moon, and that one's over a million now as well. Um, and then before long, because my videos were getting out there so much, people would start messaging me saying, oh, I saw your video cleaning a roof. Would you be able to come and clean mine? I live in, 
you know, Scotland, I live in Manchester, I live in Wales, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, let's go for it. Um, so it's a lot of my work now comes in from the YouTube videos, which is mad. It was the original goal of the channel, let alone getting 60,000 subscribers. But um, so I just, I, you know, they say if you, something goes well on YouTube, just keep doing what you're doing. So that's just all I've done. So I just, that's when pressure washing really, I was like, gosh, this is a, uh, get some good views here. So let's uh, get some more pressure washing in. So I just went with that then. And that's roof cleaning. I still do more, um, but I don't put roof cleaning videos on YouTube as much because a lot, unless it's a really interesting house, it's just a bit of the same sort of footage. It doesn't hit a wider audience. So I put like a lot of the pressure washing videos I do on the channel, but not all of them. Because some of them, again, who wants to see the same type of driveway cleaned every single video? No one does. So I try and like mix it up and, and stuff like that. So yeah, anyway, this is going to be a long video, man. I'm so sorry, everyone. So good timing, really, because on a post I did, there's been like five people that said, can we have a equipment review? So yeah, already done that. Nice one. And that's something I get a lot of as well, which makes me really happy. I get these messages literally every day now of people saying, um, hey, Sid, you've inspired me to start my own business. You've inspired me to do this, you inspired me to do that. That's like wicked. I'm, I can't believe that. It. Um, I honestly, I, there must be hundreds and hundreds of people now because at least once a day, someone messaged me saying, "Oh, I love the videos. You've, you've made me want to get into pressure washing. Can I have some help on this and help on that." And yeah, I absolutely love hearing that. It's amazing. So I'm glad I've been able to have that effect on people because um, it's with running my own business now. For so even though it didn't do well for so many years, now that it's starting to do okay. Um, you'd never be able, I'd never be able to go back so I, I always try and push if anyone's there like oh I don't know you know you can tell they hate their job I'm like just find something just go self-employed just find something to do because working for yourself um, is unbeatable um, you need to be motivated most of the time um, but if you are and you know if you if you need to pay bills anyway you've got to be you've got a choice so um, yeah self-employed is is definitely the way forward and I'd say this to, to people as well that are running their own business start a YouTube channel I tell friends and stuff every day start a youtube channel doesn't matter what it is just start a youtube channel on it because you never know i didn't expect this to do this well um so i would push anybody to start a youtube channel because it costs nothing um apart from a camera and just been learning how time basically that's all it costs is a camera a bit of equipment and time so if you've got the time or find the time because i didn't really have the time to do it i did when i started i don't really have the time to do it now but i find the time so i'll go to bed later and i'll get up earlier you know what i mean if i need to get a video done or well, sometimes I'll completely not do a day's work to make sure I can get a video done um, because in my head it's just worth it for me. So, um, and you never know, there's people out there that do the strangest stuff ever um, and the channel just takes off because it's unusual, it's not something you see every day, it's not the same type of video. It could just be someone walking around looking at rocks and <laughs> you know what I mean? People will watch it because it's like, oh, wow, that place is cool, you know what I mean? And that's it. And you never know what can happen. It's it's not easy. I mean, I've been very lucky. Um, I do account most of the success of this just down to luck of those few videos going off because there's a lot of guys I watch that um, some of them are better than me at, at this job. You know, I'm still relatively new. I've only been pressure washing for um, a year. Um, there's some guys that have been doing it for decades and uh, they do a better job than me. They make videos, but they haven't got to this point. Um, it is literally just a lottery. So if you keep playing it, you know, eventually you might win. So uh, this is one I get a lot of as well, is how do you get these like school jobs? How do you get these like uh, really big, what's going on camera? Sorry guys, I'm trying to switch it. That bit better, yeah. Um, yeah, how do you get some of these like really big jobs that you do? Um, gotta be smart about it. If someone approaches you, I'll go through the bigger jobs first. So if a big commercial client gets in contact or someone's just got a massive, massive, massive house and things like that, and you're thinking, I really want this job, this job would be so cool to do. Um, and then you're worried in the head because you know the quote's gonna be like multiple thousands and you're thinking, I've never put in a quote for bigger than 300 quid. You know, how am I gonna go about it? It's all in the confidence. It's just a complete thing of just being completely confident in knowing that you can do the job first of all, because if you are um and an R and you'd be like, oh, yeah, they're all well, yeah the customer will sense that weakness that you're nervous about this job even if you've never done anything on the scale of it before you're going to be nervous but you need to not show that you're nervous because it will be sensed it will be picked up on and they'll know because they where's that grass up from my car Damn. see him hello buddy yeah big one 
Yeah, anyway, because the customer will know, they'll, they'll know that their roof or their gigantic driveway is going to be, you know, a big job for anybody. So, um, yeah, you just need to be completely confident with it. If you go and see it in person, um, sorry, my back is killing me today. Um, just measure it up exactly how you would in a normal job or if it's um, if it's too big to measure because like, I've had that a few times when you turn up and it's like you've like man it'll take me about two hours to even measure this thing um, so you just just split it up into sections say if it's a really big roof just think right instead of me thinking like oh my god this job's going to be three thousand pound or something just think right this is that's cut that bit off that's a three bed semi house that I'll do that's my typical property there's five of them so it's the basically the equivalent of five normal jobs then obviously scale down the price a bit because it's the equivalent of doing five jobs in one job um, and then go from there just cut everything up manage it um, and it becomes a lot easier then to quote these big things same with the commercial stuff we used to really struggle with commercial stuff um, if you're pricing it off a meter squared remember every job's different and you know it's not s easy to just have the same formula for pricing every job you've got to kind of wing it sometimes so i usually get like a rough base of right this is my meter squared so it works out to this job is going to be x amount of thousands or one thousand pound for this job um but it's three stories or you know it's this type of stone or it's this 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 and this i'm going to add on this much on top of that price um that's my process that's how i go about it and then make sure i would recommend never Unless it's a small job, then yeah, you can throw a, a price off on the day while you're there. But if you quote in a commercial job or a really big property, it's best to go home, think about it. Don't try and sell a price there on the day. Go home, think about it. Uh, go over the pictures if you've take, like, taken any and then do a nice professional quote through email to the customer. Um, I find that works out best and then just detail everything that you've put on it. Um, and again, another tip as well, if you do start making YouTube videos of your work, um, it's a really good way to sell jobs sometimes even if that person hasn't found you through YouTube they've just got in contact you can basically write up your quote and say here's a link to a video one of my videos this is me cleaning a surface that's exactly like yours so when you get to the end of the video the end result here is going to be similar to um, the end result of your property so then instead of them just blind, blindly trusting you they've got physical evidence of you doing that's a similar job to theirs if you know what I mean um, so yeah good tip for everybody there um, how do I get the school work um, I used to I was on Checker Trade in the UK which I think and one school got in contact with me through there so I went and did that job and then I used that job as a reference to then get other jobs because once you're trusted by one school you know you'll be trusted by all of them really um, and then yeah I used to really charge quite well for the school cleaning work but now to be honest with you uh, I do I do most of them for free um, to make the YouTube videos on so um, now what I do if I'm if I'm thinking right it's been a while since I've cleaned a playground I will uh, just write up an email and send um, just basically what I do in an email um, to various schools in my local area um, and if they reply great which is one I'm going to see in half an hour actually I sent an email about two months ago I think and said hi um, I do a little thing where I just do free community cleanups um, schools are always really popular so if you've got any surfaces on your playgrounds that you'd be interested in having cleaned um, I'll pop around have a look don't worry about paying for it as long as I'm okay to film obviously I'll do it when there's no kids around and stuff like that um, you know I'll be happy to do the job for free so that's basically how I go about getting that sort of work um, it's quite straightforward really um, I've tried it with churches churches are really distrusting for some reason um, so yeah because I really want to do some like cool stuff with some churches and things but it just seems hard to get my hands on it at the moment but um, yeah, schools are always a winner really, so yeah. So and finally, because I have got to run in a minute, um, what's next for the channel, what's upcoming, what am I going to be doing? I have spoke about this briefly earlier. I've got a few community cleanup charity jobs um, coming up. Um, so I'm going to be putting my heart and soul into, do in, into those videos. So I really hope you guys watch that, look forward to them, um, because they will probably be, hopefully, the best videos I've, I've ever made. Because um, usually I'm in a bit of a rush. It's like I'll do a big job, get back home, edit the video and it's up it's like the whole process has been one day um you know and then it's like oh yeah i can chill out because i've always been a road because i want to keep up the regular uploads on the channel but i don't want to with especially with these like sort of charity jobs i don't want to sacrifice quality over quantity with them really um i want to make sure i do them really well um, and properly so i'm really excited to do them them ones that's going to be wicked uh i'll be working in wales at some point next month i've got 
two roofs that are really close together and it's in like the most beautiful spot ever to work in it'll be the nicest backdrop for a video um, so far on the channel so there'll be something new there again really looking forward to those it's roof cleaning but they're like bad there must be something about being in wales because those roofs are bad and i think probably some of the worst i would have ever done uh, what else have i got i'm working in manchester i'm working where else am i i'm all over the place next month it's going to be a crazy month um, but apart from that, as far as just for future stuff, um, stick, I'll stick to what I know really, so the pressure washing will still be gold. I'm just going to still just upgrade my equipment, try and upgrade the video production a bit as well, uh, and just keep doing what I'm doing. Um, a lot of people are asking for things like all oh, giveaways and things like that. That's something that I'm going to start working on very soon as well. I'm not going to like overdo it. Um, but as you've seen, I've got a lot of stuff and there's some stuff that I have that I just don't use. Um, so I might do, maybe when I hit like a milestone um, of subscribers or views on a video or whatever, I might sort of, yeah, d just sort of like do a little giveaway thing just to say thank you to everyone. Um, I'm trying to think. And again, if any companies get in touch and it's like they offer me a product and it's like, right, I want it, but I've already got it, if you know what I mean. You know, so it's be like, say, if a company got in touch and they said, hey, do you want our pressure washer? You know, it's a... £1,500 pressure washer, it's, you know, it would be cool to have as a spare, but it's me being a bit greedy, isn't it? So if I get anything like that that comes through, um, obviously it'd be like a sponsored video, but I could probably use that to give it away, if you know what I mean. So then at least someone who's struggling to start up that doesn't have the funds. I mean, mo honestly, most of the pressure washers, are, are, people ask me to do a video at least three, four times a week from like an Amazon uh, pressure washer. Um, I did the one for that Paxess one a while ago because I saw that and it actually looked pretty neat. Um, and a few people I know um, have said they've got it and they said they've, they've enjoyed it. But again, I said in the video, it's perfect for tiny little areas. You don't want to be using that, you know, as a job. Um, but again, I get asked like about new ones of them, like loads of stuff like that all the time. And I just have to keep turning them down because I'm not just going to repeat the same sort of video, you know, and just promote some small domestic pressure washer for no reason because I've already got a video doing that. So... So yeah, if I get anything cool that is actually like beneficial to a business, then I will do a giveaway on it um, if it's like something that I don't need or if I've already got something similar to it. So yeah, that's something I'll be doing in the future. Uh, what else have we got coming up? Collaborations. This is something um, I've been meaning to get done. Um, as a, this month coming up again is a busy month, so probably after November or maybe during from November, I'm going to start sort of opening myself up to working with other people again. I know DJ Projects, they want me to come down and clean some of their um, plant machinery, uh, which would be awesome. I can't wait for that. So I'll probably do that towards the end of the year if they still need it done. Um, again, some of the guys that I just know sort of anyway on a daily basis, I'd love to go down. Flawless Cleaning, a lot of you guys know Ben from Flawless. So I want to head down and do sort of a day's work with him. I think that would be cool. Um, but it's just stuff. I've just got to wait because I'm so busy. I can't let like my business fall behind. So, but it's coming up, it's in the, it's in the works. Um, but that's about it really, guys. I don't really know what else to go through. I think I've covered, I'll, as soon as I stop recording this and I get home, I'll be like, oh, I should have done that. But uh, yeah, maybe there'll be a follow-up to this at some point. I know it's, again, this video might be an hour. I don't actually know, but I hope you guys have enjoyed. I've got to run now and uh, go and have a look at that school. Um, thank you again, everybody, for 65,000 subscribers. Absolutely mind-blowing. Um, as far as the UK goes for exterior cleaning, um, I'm number one in the UK by a country mile. Um, it's madness. There's still um, there's a few pressure washing channels and stuff that are a bit bigger than I am, but you know maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll catch up to them soon. But uh, yeah, I'm blown away by the support. So thank you everyone. It's been a it's been a wild year so far, and I think it has literally. I think we might almost be genuinely a year to the day, which is just mind blowing for the channel to get this big. So from the bottom of my heart, everybody, thank you very, very much. I've enjoyed it so much so far. So here's to another year. Hopefully we can do everything we've done this past year again and the channel can keep growing. But even if it stays exactly where it is now, I've, I've already completed it. I feel like so uh, proud and yeah, so lucky to have, have got this far. So anyway, guys, I better run. But yeah, thank you everyone for tuning in. Hope a few questions. I'm oh, sorry I didn't get too many questions. Um, yeah, it just takes me forever to answer things, it seems like, doesn't it? But hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I'll see you very soon. Um, Expo on the weekend. As soon as I get back, video schedule will resume as normal. So, yeah, peace, everyone. Cheers.